Greetings and welcome to the True Blue First Quarter 2023 Earnings Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A brief question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, Derek Gafford, Chief Financial Officer. Thank you, Derek. You may begin. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's call. I'm joined by our Chief Executive Officer, Steve Cooper, and our President and Chief Operating Officer, Tara Owen. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that today's call and slide presentation contain forward-looking statements, all of which are subject to risks and uncertainties and we assume no obligation to update or revise any forward-looking statements. These risks and uncertainties, some of which are described in today's press release and in our SEC filings, could cause actual results to differ materially from those in our forward-looking statements. We use non-GAAP measures when presenting our financial results. I encourage you to review the non-GAAP reconciliations in today's earnings release or at TrueBlue.com under the Investor Relations section for a complete understanding of these terms and their purpose. Any comparisons made today are based on a comparison to the same period in the prior year, unless otherwise stated. Lastly, we will be providing a copy of our prepared remarks on our website at the conclusion of today's call, and a full transcript and audio replay will also be available soon after the call. Okay, let's turn the call over to Steve. Thank you, Derek, and welcome everyone to today's call. Given the macroeconomic climate, we are pleased that demand for our services was right in line with our expectations. Our People Ready business is one of the first to feel the impact from a change in macroeconomic conditions, given the short duration of job assignments and the project-based nature of its services. After experiencing the first signs of a slowing demand during the second quarter last year, the underlying revenue trends at People Ready have been steady since October. As we expected, our People Scout and People Management businesses followed suit with slower demand trends during the first quarter this year, as some clients trimmed their human capital spending due to macroeconomic uncertainty, despite many clients having open positions. This led to overall revenue of $465 million, down 16% compared to Q1 2022. Because these anticipated trends, the People Scout and People Management teams were proactive, taking swift actions late in the quarter to reduce costs to ensure the operating structure was more in line with demand. Our teams were also able to maintain pricing discipline throughout the quarter and deliver another quarter of positive bill pay spreads in our People Ready business. Turning to the segments, People Ready is our largest segment. It represents 56% of total trading 12 month revenue and 57% of total segment profit. People Ready is a leading provider of on demand labor and skilled trades in the North American industrial staffing market. We service our clients via a national footprint of physical branch locations supported by our JobStack mobile app. Revenue for the quarter was down 17%. As a reminder, in the first quarter of 2022, people already benefited from a demand surge across the business as our customers were in desperate need of, of labor during the post-COVID recovery, creating a year-over-year headwind. Setting this factor aside, our sequential revenue trends remain consistent with typical historical patterns. People Scout is our highest margin segment, representing 14% of trading 12 month revenue and 33% of total segment profit. People Scout is a global leader in filling permanent positions through our recruitment process outsourcing services. People Scout revenue declined 15% in Q1 as a result of a reduction of permanent job openings at our clients. We have seen some clients slow hiring, while others have paused activities altogether. 
People management represents 30% of trailing 12-month revenue and 10% of total segment profit. People management provides on-site industrial staffing and commercial driver services in North America. The essence of a typical people management engagement is supplying an outsourced workforce that involves multi-year, multi-million dollar on-site or driver relationships. Revenue is down 13% in Q1. We have seen less volume at the e-commerce warehouses for our on-site retail clients as consumer spending patterns have shifted. Now I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about our strategies. Our strategy at People Ready is to digitalize the business model to gain market share, improve efficiency, and take the friction out of each step of the transaction with associates and customers. The United States temporary day labor market is highly fragmented and primarily made up of smaller competitors in the industrial staffing segment where People Ready operates. This market is also less complex than other types of staffing and has the best opportunity for digitalization. Our smaller, more regional competitors lack the ability to invest in digital applications like JobStack. When combined with our expansive brick-and-mortar branch network, we are a one-stop shop for national and local accounts, making us a leading provider within the on-demand industrial staffing market. At People Scout, our aim is to capitalize on a strong service reputation and ability to hire in high volume to gain market share within the RPO industry that has consistently produced double-digit annual revenue growth in favorable economic conditions. People Scout is a market leader in the RPO space as a result of its people and Affinix, our recruiting platform. Both enable us to place better talent faster in all types of market conditions. As we move forward, we plan to target new high growth sectors for us, such as life sciences and technology. Our positive track record of penetrating healthcare, depth of experience, and our technology makes this possible. People management strategy is to supplement our traditional on-site staffing services with higher margin product offerings like on-site workflow solutions and commercial trucking, as well as expand geographically within the United States to increase market share. We believe we are positioned well for a strong recovery as we serve customers in some of the fastest growing segments, and we have taken the proper steps to be nimble, yet strong in our preparation to be the supplier of choice in connecting people and work. Now we'll turn the call over to Karen. We'll discuss specifics on some key priorities this year. Thank you, Steve. From a big picture perspective, this quarter provided a solid proof point for the value of our flexible business model. We struck a careful balance between ongoing investments in our people and technology and cost actions to align with client demand. At People Ready, the investments in our people are paying off. First, we have made a concerted effort to maintain staffing levels in the field. In addition, we have enhanced our sales training with the on-demand business and have embedded account managers to cover new markets within skilled trades. These tactics are playing a key role in the steadiness of our underlying revenue trends. At People Scout and People Management, we have leveraged our scalable model to align with lower hiring activity from our clients. We scaled down with agility late in the first quarter in an effort to bring our cost structure in line with demand. And just as we did during the COVID downturn, we are staying extremely close to our clients so that when they return to expansion mode, we will be there to meet their needs and scale back up with the same urgency and effectiveness. Now, I would like to provide some updates on the priorities I discussed during our last call. We are in the midst of a multi-year digital transformation. Investments in our platforms are essential and will help us better service our clients, attract workers, and support our people. Our People Ready Job Stack application 
and People Scout Affinix recruiting platforms enable us to provide differentiated experiences to those we serve. With JobStack, we are focused on attracting and retaining more associates by enhancing their overall experience. We are on track with various upgrades, including faster associate registration and simplifying the time entry process. These product enhancements will lead to increased client fill rates and increased associate retention, both of which will lead to higher customer satisfaction and ultimately more wallet share. Affinix is our People Scout recruiting platform designed to meet candidate expectations for a seamless experience. Affinix combines many facets of the recruiting process, including recruitment marketing, applicant tracking, candidate relationship management, and interviewing to quickly bring a highly qualified talent pool to our clients. As I mentioned, the flexibility of our business model is critical to our clients. The agility of Affinix fulfills this need, allowing us to scale up and down to meet their hiring needs. While technology is an important business enabler, our relationships with our clients, candidates, associates, and employees are essential to our success. Our employees fulfill our mission to connect people and work each and every day. Our team has worked hard to ensure that our people have the right tools, training, and skills to meet our clients' needs, and they continue to broaden the depth of our learning and development activities with a concentration on sales effectiveness. By enhancing the team's ability to bring solutions to our clients while maintaining the appropriate staffing levels across our business, we are positioned to meet our clients' demands across all business cycles. I look forward to providing further updates on our technology and people priorities on future calls. I'll now pass the call over to Derek, who will share further details around our financial results. Thank you, Taryn. Total revenue for Q1 2023 was $465 million, a decrease of 16% and in line with our outlook. As we've mentioned, people already benefited from a demand surge in the prior year period as the peak of the post-COVID recovery left our customers in desperate need for labor. As expected, the surge did not repeat this year, contributing 9 percentage points of total revenue decline. The remaining 7-point decline reflects the company's underlying revenue trend. Given the macroeconomic client, we are pleased to see another quarter of steady underlying revenue trends in our people-ready business with weekly sequential revenue trends following typical historical patterns. As we mentioned last quarter, during times of macroeconomic uncertainty, we typically see the first signs of slowing demand in our people-ready business due to the project-based nature of the work and short length of job assignments. And that is exactly how things have played out over the last 12 months. People-ready was the first to experience slowing demand and the People Scout and People Management businesses followed suit this quarter. We posted a net loss of $4 million this quarter, down from net income of $11 million in Q1 last year, while adjusted EBITDA declined to $3 million versus $23 million in Q1 last year, due primarily to, due to the revenue decline. As a reminder, Q1 is seasonally our lowest revenue quarter, creating a more pronounced impact on year-over-year -year profitability. The net loss experienced this quarter is not indicative of our expectations for the remaining quarters this year. Gross margin of 26.5% was up 110 basis points. The expansion was driven by better workers' compensation results from the favorable development of prior year reserves, as well as disciplined pricing in our people-ready business. Our people ready business delivered its eighth consecutive quarter of positive spread between bill rate and pay rate inflation. SGNA as a percentage of revenue increased 450 basis points, mostly due to operational deleveraging given the revenue drop, which is magnified by the first quarter being our seasonal low point in revenue. SGNA dollars increased 2 million or 2% primarily due to people investments in the people-ready business. 
As discussed on prior calls, we believe we reduced our staffing levels too low during the recession of 2020, leaving some of our people-ready branches without adequate resources to acquire new customers and maintain strong relationships with existing customers. Q1 headcount this year is consistent with headcount in Q3 and Q4 of last year, but up a bit from Q1 last year. While we are not planning on making additional investments in our staffing levels at this time, we do believe the people investments we made last year have had a role in maintaining a steady underlying revenue trend over the last two quarters, despite economic uncertainty increasing. For people scout and people management, we've taken a different path. Revenue softened during the quarter, and we took action to reduce our costs. As a result, we expect to yield $11 million in cost savings over the remaining, remainder of 2023. About a quarter of the savings will flow through cost of services, with the remainder flowing through SG&A. Our effective income tax rate was a benefit of 13% and in line with our outlook. Now, let's turn to the specific results of our segments. People-ready revenue decreased 17%, while segment profit decreased 95%, and segment profit margin was down 500 basis points. As we've mentioned, people-ready benefited from a demand surge in the prior year period, which accounted for 16 points of the year-over-year -year decline. The remaining decline of one point reflects people-ready's underlying revenue trend for the quarter, which was roughly in line with the underlying revenue decline for this business unit in Q4 2022. The drop in segment profit and related margin came from the revenue decline and operational deleveraging, which were partially offset by lower workers' compensation expense and favorable bill pay spreads. Bill pay spreads have remained strong, with bill rates up 7.9% and pay rates up 7.1%, resulting in a positive spread of 80 basis points. People Scout revenue decreased 15%, while segment profit decreased 19%, and segment profit margin was down 60 basis points. As expected, RPO business volumes declined this quarter as clients responded to the macroeconomic environment. We've seen some clients slow hiring, while others have paused their hiring activities, taking a wait and see approach. With the cost reduction actions previously discussed, our goal is to generate a segment profit margin of 10 to 15 percent over the remainder of 2023, assuming stable macroeconomic conditions. People management revenue decreased 13 percent, with segment profit dropping to break even, and segment profit margin was down 190 basis points. Demand declined in both on-site and commercial driving services as economic uncertainty led to lower client volumes, most notably in retail and transportation. The decline in segment profit and related margin was mainly due to the decrease in revenue and the associated operational deleveraging. Now, let's turn to the balance sheet and cash flows. Our balance sheet is in great shape. We finished the quarter with $47 million in cash and no outstanding debt. The business produced cash flow from operations totaling $9 million. We repurchased $25 million of common stock during the quarter, leaving $64 million remaining under our authorization. Now, I'd like to take a moment to provide additional color on some forward-looking items. We expect a revenue decline of 14 to 10% in Q2 2023 which is an improvement to the 16% decline posted in Q1 this year. The improvement is tied to a less challenging prior year comparison. One last thing before we wrap up. As a reminder, the 2023 fiscal year will have 53 weeks, which is a typical occurrence every five to six years since we operate on a 52-week fiscal year versus a calendar year. This extra week will provide incremental revenue for the year of 22 to 27 million, but will not contribute additional profit as the 53rd week is an annual low point for weekly revenue. For additional details on our outlook, please see our earnings presentation posted to our website today. This concludes our prepared remarks. 
Operator, please open the call for questions. Thank you. We will now be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. One moment, please, while we poll for questions. Thank you. Our first question is from Karit Mehta with North Coast Research. Please proceed with your question. Uh, thanks. Um, maybe just your thoughts on what the first few weeks of April have looked like and uh, maybe the trends you saw coming out of the quarter as in uh, start of the next quarter, if you saw any changes. Hi, Kartik. It's Derek here. Uh, so let me just touch on that, that question for the, the quarter, the, the monthly trends, and maybe then I'll just ease into April to bring them both together. So the monthly trends in Q1 were very similar to the 16% decline. Everything was within a point or two of that, so not much volatility in that, and we, we finished right around that level. Going into April, the year-over-year -year decline at People Ready is uh, diminishing. That's really, though, all about the prior year comparison being less challenging. You know, we've talked about the surge that we've had uh, in our prior year comparison for Q4 and here in Q1. That gets less challenging as we uh, move into Q2. Now, uh, that's, that's really for the staffing side of the house. From uh, a People Scout perspective, while we haven't posted our revenue any, uh, yet here in Q2, we, we bill monthly. One thing that I will bring up is we do expect a year-over-year -year decline to increase for People Scout. It's less about the sequential revenue dropping off more, although there might be two or three million. Uh, it's more due to Q2 of last year was a record quarter for People Scout everywhere, both in revenue, bottom line dollars, uh, the, the segment profit margin at 23% was a rev, was a, was a, a high point. So um, that uh, that's providing a more challenging comparison across a few fronts, most notably on, on the revenue line. So you might see People Scout edge up closer to a 25% a decline in, in Q2. And then just from your perspective, um, as you look at your end markets, uh, what differences you're seeing in end, end markets, if any? Sure. Well, there's probably two or three high points and uh, – some low points, I guess you could call it here, depending on the, your take given the environment. Uh, probably one of the biggest movers for us was in the area of retail. Uh, the retail business for us is down 40% year over year here in Q1. The majority of that is about the prior year comparison. We had a lot of projects in this uh, surge that we had in the prior year period at People Ready. A lot of it had to do with retail. Uh, that said, there is a little bit of softening in the run rate with retail as well. While, you know, retail spending on the consumer side is, is actually holding up pretty well. If you, you talk to our customers, the main thing where we're seeing some slowdowns in retail, it's really about inventory levels, uh, which I think is pretty consistent with uh, the increase from uh, a broader perspective on inventory levels across the, the United States. Um, uh, so that's on the, the manufacturing and the retail side. Uh, a high point um, is our energy business. Our energy business, renewable energy business, is up about 45%. That's a business that uh, is about an $80 million run rate and increasing. It's one that we're very excited about and, and bullish about. So maybe I'll turn that one over to, to Taryn and give you a little bit more operational color on that, that business unit. Sure. Thanks, Derek. Um, Certainly the government incentives that were put in place this year have helped um, fuel some opportunities for us in the renewable energy space, particularly uh, within solar farms. Um, we are a leader in this space with over a decade of experience. Uh, but when we start to look at our new business wins and the pipeline that has been growing here, um, we've got just a tremendous pipeline. Uh, it's grown 10 times over prior year. 
and our RFP volume is really healthy. Uh, we're responding to over 10 opportunities uh, each and every week here as we uh, exit Q1. So uh, we're really bullish on this uh, on this opportunity for people ready. And there, just one last question. You know, as you look at uh, trying to right size the business or make cost cuts. Uh, I wonder how much will play into not losing quality people since it's been so hard. So, you know, do you think this time around you might be a little bit uh, conservative and not right size the business as much as if it was a normal type of recession or a normal type of labor environment? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. You know, when when we're growing, we're in, we're investing, and when we're not growing, we're making adjustments. And you saw some of those adjustments that we made here this quarter in our people management, particularly our people scout business. Uh, those are hard adjustments for us to make, but we think they were smart adjustments to make. And what I mean by that is whenever we're doing any type of cost work, we're trying to make a balance between the benefits that will come from reducing the cost structure and our ability to grow long-term gross profit dollars. In this particular case, the actions that we took in Q1, while tough and impacted some people, which we don't like to do, uh, we don't think that that made any uh, hampering of our ability to spring back strong after, uh, uh, well, we'll see if we go into recession, but when things get to better times and, and the economy starts growing at a more robust pace, we, we think uh, that won't hold us back at all. Over on the people ready side, we've, we've taken a different route. Uh, we have not cut positions there. Matter of fact, our headcount's up about 120 or 130 over Q1 last year, but stable with where we were in Q3 and Q4. And we cut a lot of uh, costs in 2020. Uh, a lot of those costs are still out of the business. And, you know, at the end of the day, we look back at what we did in 2020 and just said, you know, we cut too far. We can't run branches in the way that we want in local markets without branch managers can't run branches with two people, uh, at least not effectively. So we want to keep ourselves positioned really well for the long term and, and hold on to good people that know our business, that know how to interact with customers. And as much as we're making progress on the digital front, this is still a relationship business, and uh, we, we can stay true to that. So uh, that's kind of how we're taking a look at things, Kartik. Thank you very much for your thoughts. I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question comes from Jeff Seidler with BMO Capital Markets. Please proceed with your question. Thanks so much. That's close enough. Um, Derek, you were kind enough to give us a little bit of color on the segment data in terms of revenues. I think you mentioned People Scout. Can we get the same kind of color for both People Ready and People Management for 2Q guidance? Oh, as, as far as what we're uh, expecting from a, from a revenue perspective that's embedded in the, the overall guidance? Yes, please. Yeah, you bet. Uh, so, you know, we gave ranges. I'm not going to quote ranges to you. I'm just going to go to the midpoint of the ranges and uh, uh, give you uh, some numbers. So we'd expect uh, people ready to be down about 10%, people scout to be down about 25%, and people management to be down around 10%. Okay, forgive me if you gave this out. I must admit that I appreciate it. Um, in the quarter, you had a workers' comp benefit can, in, in terms of, a, I guess, it's a recouping of some of the reserve. What drove this, and can you remind us when you update this reserve? Is it quarterly or semi-annually, and should this be something we should expect going forward? Well, we get an independent actuary re report every quarter. Uh, so we always keep a, a watchful eye on the workers' compensation reserves, uh, both the current year reserves and what we should be accruing for, as well as where reserves should be in prior years. Uh, yeah, so we did get a sizable decrease to reserves in uh, the prior years. Um, you know, as we take a look at the rest of the year, uh, we'd expect there to be a, a little bit of a, a, a headwind from workers' comp. We put up some sizable uh, benefits, too, in uh, the back half of 2022. And so if you take a look at our gross margin guidance while we're up uh, Q1 this year over Q1 last year, we're expecting gross margin to be about flat for the year. Some of that's because of workers' compensation. 
Some of that's because of, um, you know, we expect bill pay spreads to still stay positive, but to diminish some as we move through the quarter. So that gives you a little bit of color on workers' compensation, Jeff, and, and expand it to, to cover the, the gross margin line in whole. Okay, that, that's really helpful. And just, if I can sneak in one more, um, you have a slide here about the, the strength in your balance sheet, and again, it's very impressive, especially in this kind of environment. Um, from a capital allocation perspective, I know you bought back about $25 million in shares last quarter. Um, what should we expect going forward? More of the same? Are you taking advantage of maybe some, you know, what's going on in the market to potentially pick up some M&A? Any color would be great. Yeah, you bet. Well, when it comes to capital allocation strategies, our first priority is reinvesting in the business. We've got a healthy amount of CapEx. That's not an area that we have cut back on. And when I say CapEx, the vast majority of this is about technology. You know, uh, our business and industry is becoming more uh, digitalized all the time. We're, we're a leader there. We want to stay a leader in that. And um, we're going to stay committed to that, both to differentiate ourselves in the marketplace and take advantage of the strong operating leverage that we've got, but also to increase our efficiency. So that's, that's job number one. Um, job number two would be on the acquisition side. Uh, probably less so on the staffing business side. We got our hands full with a lot of great stuff digitalizing the business, and we think that's our best return at this particular moment. This is continuing our focus there. On the RPO side, that's a different that's a, a different ball game. We we are interested in doing some acquisitions that would give us a greater presence in different niches of different industries um, to get us into more deals, win more deals, and and potentially some on an international basis that would increase our likelihood of winning multinational deals. And then lastly, as you pointed out here, returning capital back to shareholders is important to us, especially at you know, advantageous prices. And we think our company right now at this particular moment is uh, valued very economically. So we did buy back $25 million of stock. We, we'll also see when you take a look at the 10Q in between uh, the close of the quarter, and uh, the end of last week, we bought back about uh, another $10 million. So um, that's, how, that's kind of how we see our, our capital priorities uh, at this point in time, Jeff. Okay. Thank you so much for the color. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mark McCrone with Bayard. Please proceed with your question. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. wondering... Steve or, or Tara, can you talk a little bit more about the, you know, some of the markers in in terms of the digitization strategy and and job stack, and you know what what further improvements should we see with regards to you know the ease for people to register, um, and and what you think that would translate to from a business perspective. Hey, thanks, Mark, for for the question here. It's it's an important topic for us. Uh, taking the friction out of the transaction between our associates and ourselves, uh, not making it so difficult. So your question's right in the middle of the bullseye of, of what we think is important and what we're working on uh, for digitization. The, uh, with the customer, it, it, it's not appearing to be the most important thing, but uh, we still want to take friction out of that, that transaction and help them uh, be able to order workers as fast as possible. So. Let me have Taryn talk a bit more about those specifics, but I kind of wanted to chime in first to let you know that uh, it remains our highest priority, taking this friction out of a, of a pretty complicated process of finding a job for somebody, and we can make it easier, and we stay committed to that. Yeah, just to add some color, um, certainly JobStack has allowed us to maintain constant contact with our customers and our associates, and um, when we look at some of the um, some of the enhancements that we're making, it's really around um, taking um, some of that friction out, as you mentioned, uh, Mark, in terms of allowing associates to register for a job faster, which just um, really uh, reduces the time it takes to get them on an assignment and uh, to get paid. One of the other key uh, enhancements we're working on is to improve the ease of um, time entry and approval. So again, our associates can uh, can get paid faster and uh, be ready to uh, take their next assignment with us. But um, when you think about kind of everything that we're we're doing uh, in the product to enhance that experience, it's really about uh, taking that friction out and ensuring that 
um, our associates and customers can engage with us in an effective way in the way in which they want to engage. Can you elaborate a little bit on that, Tara? Just uh, like how long does it take the average person to register? How, what's the goal in terms of like registration speed? Um, and then you used to give us some metrics in terms of the percentage of uh, jobs that were filled through JobStack on the people ready side. Do you, do you have any updates there just in terms of some of the typical metrics that you used to give us? Yeah, sure. So when we think about um, the uh, amount of jobs that are filled through the uh, through the app, about two thirds of all of our jobs at, at People Ready are filled um, through that experience. We, you know, have up to 90% uh, of our associates utilizing the app, and um, we've had 30,000 uh, customers uh, engaging at any given time. Um, so that's remained um, remained pretty consistent for us. In terms of registration, um, we are, you know, we're just looking to reduce the number of steps uh, it takes for an associate to uh, to get registered with us. So uh, we we want them to be uh, able to register and uh, get out on an assignment uh, with, you know. In, in 10 minutes or less, uh, ideally, uh, for us to go through the process. And it really depends on what kind of a job an associate's looking for and what kind of pre-employment qualifications are required for any particular customer. Um, but when you think about um, an associate being able to register quickly and, and get engaged, see jobs, uh, take jobs with the appropriate requirements, we want them to do that uh, very quickly. Great. And then I'm wondering, just from a macro perspective, you know, it's great to hear that, you know, your trends, particularly on the people ready side, have been, you know, um, you know, consistent with normal historical seasonal uh, patterns on a week by week basis, and kind of holding flat. How, how do you, where do you think we are from a from a macro perspective? Because a lot of the, you know, data points that, um, you know, are, are are national and you know widely disseminated seem to be getting a little bit worse and so um, do you think we've seen the worst of it or how are you thinking about that hi mark is Derek here I'll, <clears throat> I'll take that one you know if you talk to our our customers what all our customers have to say there is an increasing amount of uncertainty some of it's about those data points that are edging themselves down. A lot of it, too, has to do with an accumulation of a lot of negative press. Uh, you know, over the last 20 years, I don't think there's been any recession, if we, in fact, we have one that's been this anticipated. So there's been a lot of news out there, and it accumulates, and it makes a, an impact on confidence. And that uncertainty has, has showed up in some other metrics. You know, you take a look at the back half of last year, and the economy did grow at a pretty decent clip, all things considered, but it's all coming from the consumer. Business investment was negative. I've never seen our industry grow when business investment is negative. Uh, so those are, the, those are the clouds. I think, you know, the bright spot, the, the sun breaks, if this is a weather forecast, is the job market. The, the talent pools are still really tight. Most of our customers expect them to remain that way, and they're holding on to their employees. They're holding on to their employees, and, and employees um, are getting some confidence from that. They're continuing to spend. I, I mention that because what it comes down to for a lot of our customers is if there is a recession because of where we're at with tight labor pools and a reluctance to lay people off, which, as you know, most every severe recession has widespread job layoffs. The job layoffs have a cascading impact on consumer spending and then into business investment. And most of our customers just aren't anticipating that. So I don't know, Mark, if we're through the worst of it or not, but uh, for what we're hearing from our customers, if we do get into something, most are expecting this to be relatively shallow to what we've seen in recessions over the past 20 years. Great. And then, T, give us an update with regards on the people ready side, what you're seeing on the construction side. Yeah, you know, construction has actually been uh, a little, one of the more resilient industries. So, Taryn already talked to you about our 
uh, renewable energy, that, that part of construction, which has been growing quite nicely for us and we're optimistic about. When it comes to <clears throat> construction overall, excluding that piece of the business, so kind of your bread and butter, commercial and residential, that was down 7%. Uh, which was a slight improvement to being down 11% in Q4 of last year. That's great to hear. And on on the renewable side, how big could that part of the business get to over the next couple of years? Well, it's 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 hard for us to say, but uh, to give a number on this. Uh, but the amount of investment that, uh, and incentives that were put through last year is huge. Our pipeline is, is continuing to grow. We've got a, a lot of experience in this industry. So there have been times when in this industry where we've had other peaks. This is, this is something with the level of reinvestment that's coming from the incentives that are out there. This is something that we can see can have uh, multiple years and lots of legs behind it. So hard for us to give a number in it, but uh, I can tell you that we grew 45% here in Q1. Uh, our guidance for Q2 in that particular segment is to grow about a similar amount. So what we're seeing right now looks pretty good, Mark. That's great to hear. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw on that, Mark. Uh, I can't hesitate to talk about our own preparedness. Not, not just the size of the, of the environment or the size of the opportunity that's, that's growing. I, I don't believe we've ever been as prepared as we are for, for an opportunity like this. So I think you match the two up, and it's, it's real solid. Thank you. Our next question is from Mark Riddick with Sadati and Company. Please proceed with your question. Hey, good evening, everyone. Hey, Mark. So, so I wanted to first of all thank you for the uh, forward-looking commentary in the in the uh, presentation and, and certainly in, in prepared remarks. I was wondering if you talk a little bit about. I think you made mention as far as uh, bill pay spreads uh, and and the, the positive uh, of, of what you saw there. I was wondering how that figures into your forward commentary. Maybe what you're what you're thinking for uh, for the second quarter slash remainder of the year as far as bill pay spreads and, and how resilient that can be. And then I have one last follow-up. Yeah, thanks for that question, Mark. So uh, the spread between bill rates and pay rates was 80 basis points here in Q1. Our outlook for the entire year is 60 basis points. So that gives you some idea of how we're expecting things to kind of phase down a little bit throughout the year. We expect bill pay spreads to remain positive because we're not expecting widespread job cuts. If that were to happen, that's a whole different ballgame. Uh, the reason that we've got some diminishing bill pay spreads is just the environment that we're in. Look, the, the Fed has been really clear about their monetary policy. It's a pretty restrictive policy. It's going to be with us for a little bit. And because of that, we would expect some more belt tightening to happen with our, with our customers. That said, we think we're providing a really good value in our people-ready business. Labor is still tight. We're able to find it quickly, and we're finding really good talent for our clients. And the, the economics are showing themselves in the bill pay spread. So that's kind of how we would expect to, to see it play out the rest of, of this year, Mark. You know, the other thing is we, 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 want, we, we want to be compensated for the value that we're providing, but we also want to make sure that we don't price ourselves out of the market. This everything is mm -hmm. going to turn at some point, and we want to make sure our business we have the right people in place, we have the right technology investments, and that our price point we don't want to be the cheapest in town by any means, but we don't want to be head and shoulders above the rest when things turn to make sure that we're still uh, in the right ballpark when it comes to pricing to capture the opportunities that come with a rebounding economy. Excellent. And then I would be remiss to, to, to not sort of uh, acknowledge there's been uh, some uh, announcements of, of leadership and, and, and appointments in, in various areas over the last uh, few quarters, as well as just a couple of weeks ago. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of, of, uh, of those and maybe if there are other sort of key areas that may need still to be uh, filled 
and and maybe sort of where we are in that process because uh, certainly uh, and I, you know, congratulations to those who who are in new roles. But I was sort of wondering, sort of uh, kind of you know we are sort of toward the the end of that that process as far as the those those uh, important leadership uh, appointments. Well, Mark, thank you for the question, and I know it's not an easy one to ask, but we are excited about uh, the three promotions that were announced here a few weeks ago, all very much customer and operations-focused roles, and it, it really excites us to, to see people prepared inside, uh, well-trained, ready, been here, experienced, been in multiple positions before they were promoted. I'm, I'm going to have Taryn talk about these three roles that we just announced a couple weeks ago. They report to her, and they're helping her and her meet her objectives and operations. And I think it'd be best coming from her to to talk about these three people. But yeah, it's real exciting. So thank you for the the question there. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, really happy to talk about this. So uh, Christy Willis was promoted to the president of People Ready. Um, Christy's been with People Ready since 2018. Uh, recently serving as our um, head of sales and operations. Uh, she brings uh, 20 years of experience in all aspects of the staffing industry. Uh, Rick Batori is uh, has been promoted to the president of People Scout. Uh, Rick's been with True Blue since 2011 um, and has broad experience across our business units, um, both in digital transformation and in operations. Uh, he most recently served as People Scout's managing director of the Americas. And then Caroline Sabetti uh, was promoted to the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer for True Blue. Uh, she's been with us since uh, 2002, and uh, she has served as the Chief Marketing Officer for People Ready and People Scout, and uh, as the Senior Vice President of Communications for True Blue. So we couldn't be more excited for these three individuals or for uh, the organization as they uh, take on these roles. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are no further questions at this time. I would like to turn the floor back over to Steve Cooper for closing comments. Thank you. We sure appreciate you dialing in and, and your questions and your, your interest in True Blue. And, and uh, we, we remain committed to the, to the shareholder at this point in time on these principles we've talked about today and look forward to updating you uh, on our next call. This concludes today's teleconference. You may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.